In the NBA, it's important to maintain the long view when it comes to drafting young, promising talent and evaluating their futures. Obviously, it's great when they step onto the court as rookies and immediately pop, but more often than not, there's going to be a growing period as they get used to the level of play. Especially for the top picks that come in with lofty expectations, during this time, their mistakes are excusable, but at the same time, they need to be showing some signs of progress, and if they don't show any of those flashes, then it's time to be concerned. In today's video, we're going to be discussing four young players in particular that simply have not panned out after being top picks, and we're now at the point where it's time to give up on them ever reaching their ceilings that we all once believed they could reach. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first young player that it's officially time to give up on ever reaching their full potential is Alexei Pokushevsky of the Oklahoma City Thunder. When Poku was drafted in the middle of the first round in the 2020 NBA Draft, he was as raw of a talent as it got. Despite his thin frame, he had all of the physical tools that NBA scouts fall in love with, as a 7-footer with a 7-foot 3-inch wingspan while also playing like a guard out on the court. His play was never consistent early on, on, but after coming to the Thunder, he had a few flashes here and there that really turned people's heads, because with his size and length, he played like a guard handling the ball comfortably, running the floor, shooting from deep, and attacking the basket. Obviously, with that combination, he was getting hyped up as the NBA's next great unicorn talent. He was drawing comparisons as a mix between guys like Kevin Durant and Kristaps Porzingis, and the Thunder probably thought they had found a diamond in the rough. But we're now four years into his career, and he's pretty much completely out of the Thunder's rotation, which means they, too, no longer trust him enough even for a bench roll. In Poku's first two seasons in the league, he, even with the flashes of unicorn behavior, was horribly inefficient, shooting about 37% from the field in those first two years, and below 30% from three both seasons as well. Last season, he did admittedly shoot the ball closer to league average, with better efficiency numbers hovering around that middle mark, but his decision making on the floor always came into question. He never really figured out how to use his impressive physical tools to be an impactful defender, and and offensively, if he's not able to light it up from three like Kristaps Porzingis or make plays consistently, then it's hard for a Thunder team looking to make a deep playoff run to give him any minutes. This is the last year of his current contract, so perhaps he finds a new home in free agency this summer and rejuvenates his career, but after once drawing lofty star comparisons, his realistic ceiling is probably just a decent bench player. The next young player it's officially time to give up on ever reaching their once highly touted potential is Killian Hayes, formerly of the Detroit Pistons. There are plenty of examples of young players not being given proper chances to work through early struggles in order to develop, but Killian Hayes is definitely not one of those examples. Killian Hayes was the seventh pick in the draft in 2020, and for the last four years has been given every chance imaginable to break out, but has just not been able to show any kind of meaningful improvement. He was the Pistons starting point guard from day one as a rookie, and kept that role even through a coaching change this season, yet his production across the board was so bad I could see how much it was driving Pistons fans crazy. Despite flashing promising shot creating skills overseas as a draft prospect, Hayes has just never been able to find his scoring touch in the NBA, never once shooting above 30% from three in any of his four seasons, displaying equally frustrating touch in the paint and around the basket, and him lacking the ability to threaten defenses at all as a scorer holds back the rest of the team's offense. Sure, he's proven to be a talented passer of the basketball with good vision and instincts, but that's not enough to overcome his glaring weaknesses. This season, through 42 games, he was averaging just 7 points and 5 assists per game, shooting 41% from the field, but 29% from 3, and after some back and forth between him and his representation and the Pistons, the team chose to release him last week, so he is now a free agent. It's hard to buy into a point guard that can't shoot the ball, 
and just flamed out on the worst team in the NBA. So even if he does get another shot elsewhere, he realistically will only ever be a backup point guard at the NBA level. The next player it's time to give up on ever reaching their once gaudy potential is James Booknight, formerly of the Charlotte Hornets. Booknight was a lottery pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, but ever since that point, nothing has gone right in his career at all. When you're a lottery pick for a team that is in the middle of a rebuild phase, you would expect to be playing a lot, getting better and better over time, but Booknight's time in Charlotte was nothing short of a disaster. He only played in non-garbage time minutes in a small handful of games during his rookie season, and in those games, he rarely did anything meaningful in his opportunities. This trend would continue in each of his next two seasons, and year after year, game after game, he would shoot the ball terribly, get abused on defense, and just prove that he was not good enough for this level. The crazy part is that he entered the league as a prospect whose entire appeal was his ability to score the basketball as a crafty combo guard from UConn, but the cold hard truth is that if you're going to be a score first player, then you need to actually be able to score the ball at the high level. I know I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here, but the entire appeal with book Knight as a talent was his ability as a shot creator, so if he can't even do that, then he was bound to flame out fast. Add in the fact that he struggled every year in the summer league as well, and he had a few off-the-court incidents, and you get a guy whose NBA career may already be over just three short years in, after being one of the first names off the board. And finally, the last young player it's time to give up on is Kira Lewis of the Utah Jazz. Lewis was originally a lottery pick selected by the New Orleans Pelicans in 2020 because his speed was comparable to some of the fastest players in the game today, and with a skill set like that at his disposal, scouts were intrigued with his ability to develop into a playmaker that could push the pace. In college at Alabama, he was an average shooter who worked well in pick and roll situations and created well for his teammates, but he turned it over way too much and didn't necessarily display much versatility in the ways that he could score. He was still viewed as a lottery talent because of that blazing speed and potential improvement as a creator, but unfortunately, sometimes when you take a swing on an incomplete player, they never become complete at the next level. Lewis is now four years into his NBA career and has never really at any point been able to break into his team's rotation for consistent minutes. His role fluctuated a ton in his first two seasons as he shot the ball poorly, and the last two seasons he's been basically subbing in for garbage time. He's been traded twice in the last month as well, going from the Pelicans to the Raptors and now to the Jazz, and with his contract set to expire after this year, his impending free agency may not draw that many suitors. He would be a nice addition for a rebuilding team as a buy-low candidate, but again, like the rest of the players on this list, his days as a prominent promising lottery caliber prospect are long gone, and now we have to temper our expectations for him to being, at best, a guy who can provide minutes off the bench somewhere. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these disappointing young players. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.